Well, blessed Sunday to you as we come with our weekly worship. It is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and it is in Pentecost afterglow that we are called to reflect on Jesus' words, Jesus' encouragement, Jesus' law, if you want to use that term, of how we are to live in this world. And we are to live as sent out ones. And it starts with the initial sent out ones, the apostles. Twelve who are encouraged to be part of a new Israel. Corresponding to the twelve tribes, the twelve apostles were sent out to heal, raise the dead, cast out demons, and mend broken hearts. Bring people to the Messiah, that is, the teacher, Jesus. And so we too can learn and ask, is Jesus still wanting us to be sent? Is Jesus still wanting us to go out? We have not had our mission accomplished. Our mission has just begun, especially for our generation. And so we ask the question to the Lord of the harvest, who are you sending out? More on that as we get to the message today from our scripture lessons. But first, we have a moment to reflect upon God and God's love for us in this world. And so we start with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And we begin our service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and minds, let us confess our faith. God of strength, we confess that we are captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. We put ourselves first and others last. What we think will make us happy leaves us longing for more. Even when we want to do what is good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from death's grip on our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has sent his son to G Jesus Christ to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. And so as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join with me in prayer today? God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithful faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading, Old Testament reading, comes from the second book of the Torah, the Exodus, chapter 19, this time beginning with verse 2. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. The Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set them before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him. 
The people all answered as one, Everything the Lord has spoken, we will do. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson today is Matthew chapter 9, beginning with the 35th verse and continuing to the 23rd verse of chapter 10. As I've said before, Matthew is organized like the Torah, and this is Jesus' second discourse, the mission discourse. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Chapter 10. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also called Pete, known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave the house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for that you are to say will be given to you in that time. For it is not for you who speak, but to the Spirit of of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. My friends, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, what is the mission? Well, let's back up 
to the very beginning of our reading today. It is an assignment that's been given to the apostles, and because we are reading it today, it could be said it's an assignment that is given to us. But first, look at Jesus' actions. He healed in this section from Matthew 8 and 9 at least 10 different people. He had compassion on them. He was one that was not going to let them go, and he is inviting us, the reader, but more importantly, he's inviting his disciples to have compassion on them also, to see the world through his eyes. What do you see, he says? You see people that are torn, people that are wounded, people that need healing, people that are harassed, and most importantly, people who are leaderless. They might have people called shepherds, but they are not the good shepherd. They have people who they call religious leaders, but they are leading people astray. And of course, this accusation is nothing new. It is the accusation of most of the prophets. If you want an extended take on it, you would probably go to Ezekiel chapter 34 about God's judgment against the false leaders, the false shepherds, the false religious leaders. But Jesus said, don't let that despair just dwell in you. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. Because if you really look around, what you should see is that there is great potential for leadership, if not love, of taking authority and making things right. But it has to come and it has to be sent from the Father. Now, this is truly Israel's calling. In our Old Testament reading, the people of Israel are in many ways like the harassed ones, but they do have a leader. His name is Moses, and they have arrived at their commissioning mountain a mountain that they will stay for quite a few chapters, if not books. They'll stay there through the books of Exodus, the rest of the book. They'll stay there through the books of Leviticus. It's only after Numbers has gone through at least half of its book before they'll be sent out again in order to go and to do their mission in the promised land. And so Jesus is not coy in his description of what it means to be chosen. You're going to be harassed in many towns. Many towns are not going to receive you. In fact, you might even have the very divisions within your own family and among friends. But don't worry, I will walk with you. I will give you the words to speak, the authority over those unclean spirits. And if you're rejected, remember they rejected me. Jesus will continue to reflect on this. But once again, let's go back to the beginning of Matthew's gospel. Jesus sees the potential out there, people that are in need of healing, ministry, on every level, and maybe even a prayer that we might utter. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers. But he has some disciples with him, and he gives them much more than just an assignment for learning. He gives them a commission, almost an internship, in ministry. And he changes their name. And the name should be significant. Because while many can be disciples, these 12 will be the sent out ones. 
In fact, they will be the answer to the prayers that if we are observant, we want to have people who will put the mission first and not necessarily their prestige in life. Imperfect people. If you look through that list, you have everyone from the newly called Matthew, the tax collector, to even Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, among others with different designations that aren't necessarily qualifications for ministry. The only qualification is, is that Jesus has sent them, and they become the primary ministry of Israel. Now, if this was all that Jesus was about, we would just have an historic note about how the church was founded with the 12 apostles. We have pictures of them. Maybe some of our churches are named after some of them. Some come at untimely places. Even Paul wasn't even present until later through the book of Acts. But we must remember that the calling, this calling, did not end with the picking of the twelve. It was only the beginning. If we compare the Gospels, Luke's Gospel has a very interesting thing. It has this calling of the twelve in Luke chapter 9, and then it has in Luke chapter 10 the calling of the 70 or 72. Many argue for the 70 or 72 known nations around the world. At the end of Matthew's Gospel that we are in, there's no restrictions on where the sent ones go like there is here. Here, the mission was very specific to the lost tribes of Israel to bring Israel back to its calling from the foot of Mount Sinai. But in the future, it's going to be all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if I may be so bold, it means that you and I have the opportunity not just to pray for God to send the right people, but maybe even to ask the question whether I am the right person, whether you are the right person. God isn't going to call us to missions from long ago, but he's going to call us to missions in the present that will have future impact on the ministry of the word. But they have present impact when we decide to listen to the voice of Jesus rather than the voice of our sinful self. When we listen to the call of the Holy Spirit rather than the fear that we might have of what might happen. And just like the apostles, the sent ones, Jesus is not always that comforting about what the life of the sent one will be like. How many of us have had times where we have been rejected, sometimes even thrown out of a place, if not a house, where the welcome was not there? Now, this is not a calling just to be obstinate. This is a calling to be commitment to the mission that we have been given. And so as we consider this exodus from Jesus' ministry, we might consider our own exodus to the world around us to be part of the healing, binding up the wounds, healing those who have had issues, and to some extent even casting out demons, whether they be supernatural or more, I say, natural when we stand against unjust things in this world because the injustice of the world is just as demonic as the injustice of the supernatural. But it is a calling that is blessed not so much by results as much by endurance, which ends our good news section. And it ends with a question for us. 
you see the needs, you see that the harvest is available, but the laborers are few. You could criticize all the mishandling of other ministries, but you might want to ask the question, so you know all those circumstances, and you know that the struggle is real. What team are you going to be a part of? What ministry are you going to be called by? Because Jesus is calling not just the religious types, he's calling all types, tax collectors, sinners, those who maybe don't have a spot in the institutional church, maybe not a little label behind their name or in front of their name, like some of us are permitted to do, but simply sent out because none other than God, and specifically Jesus, has called us to this mission. So notice the circumstances. Pray to the Lord of the harvest and simply answer the call. That is the message, no more, no less. In fact, you might not know everything. In fact, here it doesn't even say that we're supposed to be teachers, for we all have one teacher, and his name is Jesus. All he wants is a willing heart with an eye and an ear for compassion, because there's enough people that have been harassed. And maybe it is as simple as a prayer. Maybe it's a little bit more involved as a financial donation to a ministry you believe in. Or maybe it is even more robust as going out and risking your life and reputation with the words that you speak or the actions you take. Or maybe it involves taking up stakes and moving to a new place, a new country, a new other part of the world. Missions can be within and without in all places. The key word is whether we're listening to where the Lord of the harvest is taking us and making sure that we have the compassion of Jesus. Because you and I can run out of that compassion. Sometimes I don't have enough in my own heart. I have to ask for the Holy Spirit, if not Jesus' compassion, to fill me. So, my friends, consider the call. Pray about the call. Go to where God is calling you. And if you think you need more instructions, well, we got a couple more weeks of reflecting upon this calling. And that will not end even after these series of, of reflections. You will always be learning, but you'll always be seeking where God is wanting you to go. So my friends, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send the workers. And if you are one of those workers, go in whatever capacity God has gifted you. And come back and listen and repeat. The Lord can encourage you and call you to go again. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks today for the eye of compassion, the ear and the sight of compassion for those around us. Lord, we pray for the situations in and around the world. Some we have power to change, some we do not. In what capacity you have given us agency, Lord, let us do it. If it is to pray, let us pray. If it is to give, let us give. And if it is to go to a new place, whether it be small or great, let us be obedient. Lord of the harvest, send us out and send out your workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for peace in this world. Although we are not directly affected for most of us, we pray for peace in 
Ukraine and Russia in Sudan and also in other places around the world. We pray for peace in our own nation. Although we may be divided on action, we pray for discernment and wisdom in how we live. Give us strength and unity only in you. We do not want to be deceived by any idol we adopt or create. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of Christ who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God and our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving the courts with praise, and give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I've not forgotten, but I just want to wish all fathers out there a happy Father's Day, including my own father, if he is watching right now. I also want to wish all of you, it is a rather new holiday, but a happy Juneteenth. It is really a celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation, a celebration that all are to be set free and live in freedom and to work against slavery if we not only sing but commit ourselves to the work of the, um, the hymns that we sing during this time of the year, especially mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. So I invite you to celebrate your fathers, celebrate your freedom, and celebrate the love that is in Christ Jesus. All of these things we can celebrate in Jesus' name. God bless you. We hope that this finds you well. Take care.